So if you're a student in uh, structural engineering or you are a professional, there's no doubt that you have used commercial finite element software in order to solve uh, structures like this one uh, and actually much more complicated than this one. Um, but this video is going to show that it is possible to write a uh, matrix structural analysis program um, for general purposes on a TI-84 plus CE calculator. Now, why would you do that? Uh, mostly, I think, just to show that you can do that. It's, it's certainly not faster or more convenient uh, than a commercial program, but it's pretty cool just the same. And so uh, this problem right here is uh, statically indeterminate to the fifth degree. Um, it has five numbered members, and it has six numbered nodes. And so I'm going to show with this program that um, I can just input all of the uh, geometry, uh, the material properties, the geometric properties, the loads, etc. And then I can get uh, generally all of the internal uh, axials, shears, and moments using a uh, six degree of freedom element, so three degrees at each end, uh, XY movement and rotation at each end for generally a six by six uh, member stiffness matrix. Um, however, in order for me to make this thing run, uh, I made it general in the sense that I could put any loads on there, but I do have to compute the fixed end moments and shears, which I'm going to do right now. So uh, wherever I have these transversely applied loads, whether they're uniform, a single point load, multiple point loads, then I just have to uh, get them into my program as lumped fixed end effect. So I'm going to do that right now. So with my fixed end moments and fixed end shears computed, I'm going to show how the program works. So my program is called FEM General, and uh, first it's going to say how many how many members I have. One, two, three, four, five numbered members. I have six nodes, <coughs> and now we'll deal with connectivity. So my arrows indicate my intended near to far direction. So member number one goes from node one to node two. Member number two goes from two to three. Member three goes from three to four. Member four goes from five to two. See that there, there's the near end and there's the far end. And member number five goes from six to three. Okay, now coordinates for each node. Uh, member, uh, node number one is at zero comma 200 and then I have 300 comma 200 for node 2 700 comma 200 for node 3 and 1000 comma 200 for node 4 node 5 is at 250 comma 0 and node 6 is at 750 comma 0 now the degrees of freedom that are known to be zero, fixed in, in some way. So you can see that, for example, all of these degrees of freedom at the fixed conditions are known to be zero. But in addition, at the roller support, we know that degree of freedom two is zero. And at the other roller support, we know that degree of freedom 11 is zero. So the way I've worded this, <coughs> I answer yes, that there are some zero degrees of freedom. And the first one I'm gonna put in is degree of freedom two. So that one is zero. Uh, degree of freedom number 11 is the next one. I'll say yes, and then 11. And then, uh, then I have 13, 14, 15. And then I have 15, uh, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, now I'm going to answer no. There aren't any other degrees of freedom that are known to be zero. All the other ones are unknown degrees of freedom. And then the properties of members. I have 10 inches squared for member number one. All materials have a modulus of elasticity of 29,000. Moment of inertia of 500. Fixed end shear for member number one is 50. Fixed end moment is 3750. 
far end 50 and a negative 3750 that would be counterclockwise or negative there is my member stiffness matrix for that one member number two has an area of 15 29,000 is my modulus of elasticity moment of inertia of 1500 fixed end shear is 150 fixed end moment is 10,000 fixed end shear at the far end is 150 and negative 10,000 is my far end clockwise fixed end moment there is that member stiffness matrix. Member number three has an area of 10. 29,000 is my modulus. 500 is my moment of inertia. Fixed end shear is at 75. Fixed end moment, 5,000. Fixed end shear, 75 on the far end. And then I have negative 5,000 as my fixed end moment at the far end for member three member stiffness matrix and then member number four has an area of 20 has a modulus of elasticity of 29,000 has a moment of inertia of 500 there are no fixed end shears or moments for that member there is the member stiffness matrix and finally member number five has an area of 20 29,000 is my modulus of elasticity 500 is my moment of inertia fixed end shears and moments are zero for that one and there is the member stiffness matrix and then I have a partitioned matrix and now I look for additional cues or forces that are applied at nodes uh, as opposed to fixed end effects so I'm going to answer one for yes because there is a 10 kip force in the direction of degree of freedom one so I'll say yes Degree of Freedom 1 has an applied force of 10 kips. Uh, this I'll answer no to. There are no additional cues. All the other cues have been accounted for. There's no other forces applied. And now I'm looking at my global displacements. There are all the global displacements. And now I have my member forces and I'm ready for free body diagrams. So my free body diagrams I'm going to start to draw as I get my output. Member number one has an axial compression of 10 kips. So there's my free body diagram of member number one, 10 kips for that one. I have a near side shear of 28.2. I have a far side shear of 71.8. My near end moment is of course zero because that's a roller condition. And then I have a far end moment of 65.28 kip inches for that one. Member number two has an axial compression of 74.9 on both ends shear of 146 on the near end far end shear is 154 near moment is 8031 far end moment is negative and therefore clockwise at 9534 free body diagram number three axial force is zero naturally because that's a roller condition over there Near end shear is 102. Far end shear is 47.9. Near end moment, 
8123. We'll call that 8124. And the far end moment is, of course, zero because that's a roller condition. Member number four has an axial compression of 227. So then our final is to just give the complete matrix. So if we wanted to re refer to under matrices, we could go in and recall that matrix. And when we do that, then we're able to go through every line. Each row represents a different member. So member number one would have a near end axial of 10, near end shear, near end moment, far axial, far shear, far moment, and so on and so forth. The next row would be member number two, member number three, member number four, member number five, etc. So this is a good exercise for someone to do, and if you are a student who has taken matrix structural analysis, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good program to try to write. I won't say that it's easy to write, but it's pretty cool when you're able to, with a little simple device like this, handle a problem of pretty substantial complexity.